Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. We have a fabulous topic for you, um, brought to us by our accredited business owner, Diana Garber, with Intuitive Concepts. So Diana is a feng shui master, and she's not your typical candle-sniffing cloud watcher. She's a true <laughs> agent, and her results have transformed the minds of many skeptics. She's lived a disciplined corporate life while simultaneously pursuing Feng Shui. As a VP of a Fortune 100 company, she oversaw 65,000 workstations and 2,500 servers. She's worked command centers for the New York terrorist attack, Hurricanes Lily and Isidore, the Fort Worth tornado, and more. Diana thrived through 20 major surgeries, two near-death experiences, and the loss of children. She says, manage your environment consciously or else it unconsciously manages you. This is why she specializes in designing offices and homes to improve people's well-being, albeit physical or mental. So with that, Diana has a fabulous presentation for us. We'll hold questions till the end. And uh, I cannot wait to hear what you have to say. Thank you. So am I on screen share? It didn't ask me which screen I wanted to share. And just for the folks who are attending, we're having some technical difficulties. And so I'm on the phone and on the computer. <laughs> plan A, plan B. On my screen, I'm trying to say share screen. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. Oh, okay, super. Thank you. So today's topic is creating balance and relieving stress at work. Thank you to the Better Business Bureau and Jessica for asking me to present. And next screen. So today's agenda, really it's all about tips, 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 <laughs> things that you can apply immediately. And we are gonna cover people, your work environments, energy, productivity, creativity, flow in and flow out, and of course, creating balance and relieving stress. Next screen. We've already done the introduction. Next screen. So most people, when they think of feng shui, um, they think of it as decorating, you know, move a couch, hang some crystals or wind chimes. Um, some interpret it as interior design, change a kitchen to create more space as an example. But in actuality, it's about managing the energy that we live and work in. So most of what's popular here in the U.S., people think of, oh, do this in your love corner or do this in your wealth corner. But as you'll see, that is a very simplified version. Next screen. So this is authentic feng shui. It actually goes back thousands of years. It's based on quantum physics and figuring out the energy footprint of the land, the building, and the occupants. Once the energy footprint is diagnosed, a specific implementation plan helps us to manage the energy. Changing negative energy into positive energy, which gives us a better expression of life. Not to say that decorating doesn't happen. It does. But it's more important to identify the root cause of an issue because we all want improvement of some sort and then address the symptoms. And it's in that is gives you the best results. So just to give you an example, I've worked with dozens of patients uh, that physicians have referred to me that they were terminal, had six to 18 months to live. And after doing feng shui, they've gone into full remission with quality of life. And that's why I was I'm the only person 
any function of person at this point to speak in a medical convention on the globe. Next slide. So it's all about energy management. What gives you energy? What takes it away? How do you conserve and manage it? So I'd like to ask you to think about right now, what gives you energy and what takes it away? You're gonna get tips on how to pay attention to your body, colors to surround yourself with, supportive directions, designing your workplace, and even playing this forward and helping your community. I have a free calculator on my website that you can, well, we're gonna walk through that, uh, but you can pay it forward and help everybody go out. If you have their birth date, you can look at what their energy is and be able to apply these principles. Now, um, Better Business Bureau has this PowerPoint as a download as part of the presentation. So you'll be able to um, download it, print it off and make some notes. If you haven't already done that, you might want to. Now, when you're operating in your peak environment, it's really a win-win. It helps you, it helps your customers, the business, your family, and your community. Next slide. I wanna talk a little bit about setting some goals. Because if you think of Alice in Wonderland, when she's going down the road and she comes upon the Cheshire cat and he's like, well, you know, which road do you want to take? And she's like, well, I don't know. He goes, well, then how do you know where you're going to end up? So I think it's really important to achieve the maximum that we can out of life that we have goals. So think about your 10 year goals, five year goals, one year, six months, one month, even each day. And have your goals visible when it comes to any type of major purchase uh, and the activities that you're embracing. Because one of the things we want to talk about is balance and having you be a priority in your life. So setting goals includes personal, in other words, family and friends, physical goals, emotional, spiritual, intellectual. We need that brain food. <laughs> financial, professional, home, and etc. My personal experience is I do set down in December of every year and I map out the goals for the upcoming year and then my husband and I talk about that and then at the end of the year we take a look at where we made progress and where we didn't and really goals it's not an end they're, they're always changing if we're because life happens every day <laughs> things happen every day. Um, so you, you should have those visible when you're making any decisions and then be flexible and give yourself a break if you haven't completely achieved something. Next slide. And here's a great way to set some goals. They're called SMART, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So I won't read that there because that's in the PowerPoint that you can download. Uh, that's a great way to approach setting some goals. Now we're going to have a Q&A session at the end of this. And so you'll have an opportunity to ask some more questions about anything that we present here. Now, next slide. Why there isn't a love or wealth corner, which is what most people think of when it comes to feng shui, is because every direction of your property, of your home, of your office building, of your desk. It's, it's like a community. So imagine a group of people and they don't come from the same culture, don't speak the same language, don't eat the same food, they don't dress the same. So you bring those people together and really they don't know how to communicate with each other. Well, if you introduce foods and music and other things, they find out that they have some commonality and then they start to say, hey, hmm, kind of like that music. Maybe, you know, we have something in common. That's what feng shui is. That's why it's change management because feng shui helps communication and flow. So let me give you an example. So on this slide, you'll see in the Northeast, the Northeast from a business perspective, has the most influence on competition, 
ethics, problem solving, and training. Well, if the Northeast doesn't know how to talk to the Southeast, and the Southeast on the right side has to do with accounting, growth, anything financial, change management, sales and profits. If the Northeast can't communicate with the Southeast, you're not gonna get the prosperity and abundance that you want in life. You're not gonna get the salary, commissions, raises. Well, those are all things that we want, which is why we work so hard. Just to give you one more example, in the top left, so you'll see here in the left column, it says male, Northwest, East, North, and Northeast. Those are all male influences. And on the right side are female influences. So if the Northwest, which rules clients, management of a company, and vendors, if the Northwest isn't able to communicate with the Southwest, which has to do with collections, customer service, and teamwork, well, we're not going to have effective communication to help teams, to help vendors, to help our clients. Okay, so we need that collaboration in order for feng shui to work. Next slide. From a health perspective, and this is my passion, I work with a lot of uh, medical institutions. Same thing is true. So if the Northwest, which from a health perspective has the most influence on our brains, heads, prostate and lungs, if it's not able to communicate with the Southwest, which is OBGYN, digestion and immune system, well, you can imagine you're not going to be as healthy. You know, it goes back to the adage that everything's connected. You know, the head's connected to the core, the core's connected to the legs and so forth. So every area has an influence on the other. And that's why it's so important to identify the root cause. And then I come up with the symptoms and identify the action plan. Now, when I was at OSU, I was a clinical instructor and their feng shui practitioner. And our rule of thumb was for every year you had any type of condition, you needed to allow at least a month of healing. Feng shui is actually the same way, which is why they brought me on faculty because we found out there's so many similarities. Feng shui isn't something you hang a crystal and you have immediate results. It's the kind of thing, once you implement your plan, and I'm gonna give you tips today, you need to allow it because it is a process. It's not a destination, it's a process. Next slide. This is the five elements, and we're gonna come back to this a couple times. So let me explain. So in the beginning, God created light, that's represented by fire. You see an arrow, the points over to earth. Well, from the Big Bang, in our case, earth was created and earth produces metal, circle keeps going, water liquefies like water. You need water to produce life, which is represented by wood. And when you burn wood, you have fire. Now we're gonna come back to this as to why this is so important. Next slide. So I want to start because this is one of the major points of today's presentation. Um, let's start by talking about your body, body's energy footprint. These are trends that you were born with. So in this quick chart, this is for West Group people. The next slide will be for East Group people. So you'll see there's a white column there and it has numbers on it. You're a six, two, eight, or a seven. The blue columns mean you were born as a male. The pink column means you are born as a female. Now, for anyone who was born between January 1st and February 4th, we're going to get even more specific because that's a little more complicated. But take a look at this chart, and if you're male, born male, uh, take a look at the blue column and find your year of birth. For females, take a look at the pink column and find your year of birth. And then in that line, 
go back and look at what your energy is. So as an example, um, let's say that you were male, born in 1976. My mouse won't work on, oh, there we go. Can you see my mouse, Jessica? Okay, so find 1976 as a male, which is in the top line, and then follow it over to the white column. So a male born in 1976 after February 5th is a number six. Okay, so write down what your number is. Next slide. Next slide. Jessica, if you'll move it to the next slide. Hello, I have moved it to the next slide. Um, so I am seeing East people. Oh, my screen still says West. Okay, so we're just having a little bit of lag. For those that don't know, we've had some very severe storms here, which has affected connectivity and electric and all kinds of stuff. So just bear with us. All right, so this is the East group chart. And again, if you were born between January 1st and February 5th, we're gonna get into a little bit more detail. Uh, Jessica, my slide now says elements and individuals. There we go, now we're at the East group. So same thing. Blue, born as male, pink, born as female. So let's say that you're a female born in 1968. If you follow that over, it says that you're a number one. Okay, this is gonna be really important. So hopefully you have identified what your number is. Okay, next slide. Now, based on your number, we have personality traits. Now, people who identified as a number nine, that means you're a fire person. And when you're in balance, you're passionate, you provide clarity, and you're dramatic. When you're out of balance, which is the negative sign, it affects your concentration level and you can be short-tempered. Next. If you're an earth person, you have a number two or an eight. When you're in positive mode, you like to be of service and you're nurturing. The flip side, when you're out of balance, you can be controlling and a worry wart. Next slide. If you're a number six or a seven, your element is the metal. And when you're in balance, you're mindful, organized, and moral. When out of balance, you're not as flexible, and you'd be hypersensitive. Next slide. If you're a number one, you're a water person. When you're in positive mode, you go with the flow, you're a deep thinker. When you're not in positive mode, you can be emotional and you don't like boundaries. Next slide. If you're a wood person, which is a number three and four, in positive mode, you're optimistic, kind, and a risk taker. When you're in negative mode, you like to debate and can be moody. Now, sometimes we get so caught up in life that we don't recognize ourselves. And that's when I say we go to shadow mode. So if your preferences are to be in the plus factor, that's when you're feeling good and you're experiencing balance and support, but when you're stressed, you go to the negative aspect, that's a quick way for your body to say, you need to take better care of yourself. And I'm gonna give you some options as to how to do that. One of the things I wanna share with you are colors to wear. Now, this isn't about packaging. It's not about your hair color, your skin tone, your body shape. 
this is about energy management. So when your body starts to hiccup or give you signs that you're stressed and out of balance, for fire people with the number nine, red, pinks, and purples are colors that will give you energy. For earth people, earth tones, yellow, tan, and brown. For metal people, think of metal colors. So white, gray, and bling, bling, jewelry. <laughs> For water people, it's blue and black. If you think of the shallow part of the ocean as blue, the deep part of the ocean is black. Those are colors for you to wear. For wood people, it's the color green. Now, that being said, the closer it is to your skin, think underwear, <laughs> the more it helps to regenerate your energy. So if you're going for an interview and you wanna have a really strong presence, wear one of your good energy colors. On the flip side, if you know you're gonna be around a stressful person or a stressful situation, wear your good energy colors. It will help to restore some of the balance. Next slide, oh, you're there. So this is my website. And for the people who are born between January 1st and February 4th, you'll see there the green arrow at the top on my website, which is in this presentation, there's a tab called learn more. You select that, next tab. Then you go to your personal feng shui calculator where the green tab is there, next slide. Then there's a place where you can put in your month, day, year, and gender at birth. And ha ha, like we don't know, males are calculated differently than females. Um, so look at your mingua, which means your birth number, which will give you the numbers one through nine. Then come down to the chart at the bottom of that page. So as an example, I'm a number three. So my good directions are gonna be south, north, southeast, and east. So the first four columns of directions are my supportive directions. The last four columns are my not so supportive directions. A lot of the feng shui books say face a good direction based on years and years of experience and research, you want a good direction supporting your back. Think about this. You might look pretty, you're facing a good direction, but if your spine is messed up, it doesn't matter how pretty you are. So you want a good direction at your back. So when you're at work, whatever cubicles, remote, have an office, you want good directions at your back. And in this spreadsheet there at the bottom of that page, it also talks about sleeping direction. And I know that's outside of the scope of this presentation, but I wanna mention it because if we sleep well, we regenerate cells and we wake up more refreshed, which also happens with our balance and stress. You want a good direction at the top of your head. Just imagine an arrow coming out of the top of your head. One of your good directions, and it actually shows on that chart, which is the best for you to get you the best sleep. And Jessica, I think you loaded a couple of the TV shows I was on where I actually talked about this too. So you want your good directions at your back. That being said, there is a power position. So we had one slide showing West Group people and we had one slide showing East Group people. If you're a West Group person, your power combination is Northeast, Southwest. What I mean by that is, if you have Northeast at your back, you're facing Southwest, both good directions. If you have Southwest at your back, you're facing Northeast, both good directions. When I go into major corporations and I work with the board of directors, it's one of the first things I look at is, are they sitting in their power position? And when we, when we reorient their offices, oh my gosh, it makes such a difference. Now, if you're an East group person, 
your power combination is going to be north and south. Same thing. If you're facing north, you got south at your back. If you're facing south, you have north at your back. That's magical information. Next slide. Now, there have been studies on children. Um, believe it or not, when babies are born, they have an internal compass. And when they go home, the crib could be moved because of too much light or too much noise or drafts or whatever that is. When they go back to sleeping in one of their good directions, remember, top of your head, their personalities improve. When they're not sleeping with a good direction, we get, get to be imbalanced and then the negative aspects that we've already identified start to pop up and take more control. Next slide. So back to the slide. If you have a number nine, you're a fire person. Two and eight, earth. Six and seven, metal. One is water. Wood people are three and four. If you're a fire person, you want to be around people that are going to give you energy when you know you're going to work really long hours or be on a very stressful project. So that's where the arrows come into play. All right. If you're a fire person, the people who give you energy are wood people. So that's where that free calculator, you can go out there and you can find people who best support you. All of the other types, if you're a fire person, so that would be earth, metal, and water, somehow they're going to drain you a little bit. I don't look at that as a negative. I look at that that if I need good critique or I need somebody to edit a paper that I'm writing, I go to the people who are going to give me that honest feedback. Whereas I go to the people who support me when I know I'm going to need a little boost of energy. So if you're an earth person, two or eight, fire people give you energy. All of the others are going to give you a reality check. For metal people, earth people give you energy. Others give you a reality check. Uh, metal I just lost my place. Metal people, earth give you energy. If you're a water person, metal people give you energy. The others give you a reality check. Your wood, water people give you energy. And if you're fire, we're back to wood people give you energy. Next slide. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, this doesn't apply to go home and paint your bedroom that color. This is about your personal energy footprint. But I do want to talk about colors for your offices. So if a room is painted in a fire color, which again goes back to red, pink, and purple, it can help with clarity and inspiration. Also, the shapes triangles, so like pendants in an office. Earth tones, yellow, tan, and brown, and square patterns in your office can be very calming. Metal, going to be white and metal colors, cir circles and ovals can provide precision and focus. Water, blue and black, are going to help with communication. Wood is green plants, rectangles, and tall plants. Those are energizing colors. Now, here's a special tip. When it comes to using red, you want to do that with discretion. It's very rare that I use red in a hospital, prison system, um, doctor's office. The reason for that is Red is a fight, fight or flight color. It actually stimulates the appetite, which is why if you watch food commercials, every food commercial, it's going to have a pop of 
read because it it's like get off the couch and go order something <laughs> there was actually a study done of young children they put these children into a blue room and they were their normal sweet selves they moved them into a red room and became very agitated and combative put them back in the blue room they calmed down these children had no sight so the red color stimulated them and it red is the highest frequency of vibration it actually they, they didn't need to see it they could experience it so that's why i say use use red with discretion and actually brown is an earth color but when it comes to painting your office or even wearing the color it can suppress your energy and suppress others energies but give it a try and see how it works for you next slide So this is typically what I see when I go into people's offices and going without saying, uh, clutter is a problem. Um, it's a non-productive, it's stagnant energy and you want your office to flow. So at a minimum, clear the space immediately in front of you and keep that space sacred for the project that you're working on at hand. Now, I'm certified Myers-Briggs, love it. This is a great picture of a perceiver <laughs> and the perceiver loves their piles, <laughs> loves the process, not the conclusion. <laughs> uh, but this goes back to your time management. You know, when you get to work in the morning or preferably the night before, take a look at what are your priorities and stick to those priorities. Next slide. So this is an example of an office, and I want you to make some observations. What do you notice about it? Kind of bland walls, lots of 90 degree angles, corners coming at you as you walk into the room. Notice that table. Okay, I'm walking into that room and that table has a corner coming right at me. That cuts the energy of the person walking in. So is that gonna be as successful or communicative as an office could be? Probably not. So my advice to you is stand in the door of your office way or workspace and look for any corners that are coming directly at the door. If you're not able to move the furniture, then find something to drape over it to cover up that point. It's called a poison arrow. Same thing with your bed at home. Sit on the bed and look for corners of any cabinetry or furniture in there that's coming at it and figure out a different way to orient your office. Next slide. Now look at this office. It more represents status and character. It lowers the center of gravity in the room so people are gonna feel more safe and secure. There's curves here curves are healing and that picture on the wall is of Oprah uh, that wall represents this person's visualization board of people they want to meet or places they want to go uh, that goes back to our goal setting you want to have things visually cues as to who you want to meet where you want to go what certificates you want what accomplishments you want in life but I hope you agree that that is much more becoming than the previous office. Next slide. All right, so I'm not gonna read this slide, but we talked about your power combination, whether you're East group or West group, but there's also something called the power position. That means that you can see the door and you can see the people coming into your office. Now, for those, and I worked in a cubicle for many years, my back was to the door. That is not an empowering way to sit. So if you aren't able to reorient the office, or if you work in a cubicle and the door is at your back, use mirrors to put in front of your face so that you can see people who are entering the room. goes without saying a good chair i mean 
when you start to get older, <laughs> you're going to hope that you had a good chair, something that's comfortable and doesn't put strain on your body. Now, I used to teach ergonomics, and so 90 degrees is the magic number. So you want your hips at 90 degrees, your elbows at 90 degrees, your wrist should rest downward not upward. Upward is going to trigger carpal tunnel and other issues, tendonitis. You want your heels at 90 degrees. So when I say a comfortable chair, that's typically not sitting on the couch with your legs folded. That's not really sustainable, not only for a day, but for years. So a good comfy chair, sit in your power position, meaning seeing see the door. And if you can, get your power combination that's ideal now again if you can't orient the office so that you have your northwest or northeast southwest or for east group people your east south north south combination you can also use mirrors to pull that energy over into you there's a couple uses of mirrors there to help correct the energy next slide Electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic frequency. This really is a conversation about energy. So those E's shouldn't be electro, they should be energy. Electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic frequencies come from cell phones, computers, digital displays on anything, microwave ovens, any type of radar equipment, and also from geopathic stress. You can purchase devices from Amazon, most technology store, micro center, that have things that you can plug in to help to handle these type of frequencies. Our bodies are not made to absorb this type of energy and it causes a lot of health effects. Now, if you keep your cell phone on your body, or you have one of those watches that sends and receives signals all the time, uh, they're gonna affect your body, I promise you. Uh, especially when you're sleeping, they should be at least three feet away from your bed. And if you have a red digital display clock, move it across the room or get a different type because remember red resonates the highest frequency. Um, Go out to my uh, website and do a search on geopathic stress. Geopathic stress has been scientifically proven to increase the risk of cancer and divorce. It agitates the body. It agitates relationships. I could, I could do an entire workshop on EMF and EMR, uh, but I just wanted to touch on it today because it's in our offices. I mean, if you have an electric strip and you've got lots of things plugged into it, there's a concentration of EMF, especially. So it could make your feet tired. It could cause restless leg syndrome. Um, so that's where it's getting something to handle it. And they're, they're typically inexpensive. Next slide. So good directions behind you minimizing corners and angles, furniture being supportive and ergonomic, mix of yin and yang. Uh, yin is soft colors and curves. Yang is straight uh, lines, corners, and bold, bright colors. Uh, balancing work-life family. Uh, trying to do something simple tasking. I'm gonna talk about that more in a minute and honoring yourself. Now, do yourself a favor. Schedule time in your day for creative project time. Take breaks on a regular basis. Get up, stretch, re-energize. Tedious tasks, schedule time. I mean, those we all have things we don't wanna do, but once we do them, we have a sense of accomplishment. And it's worth actually booking time to get those things done. 
Uh, it's also great value in journaling your activities. And I do this on 30 minute increments. And it helps me at the end of the day to see where my time value and time wasters were and how to be more effective going forward. Next slide. So feng shui is about the senses, sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. Now, Noel Arman said, I am the space where I am. And we're meant to experience sight, sounds, taste, touch, smell, because those are the pleasures in life. So when you think about your work environment, try to incorporate all of those things. Denying contact with other people sends the message that we are alienated, that we don't want to be bothered. So, you know, I always try when I go to the grocery store to, you know, smile at a stranger or talk to somebody I don't know. But if they have headphones on, I'm not going to bother them kind of thing. So just think about that when you're at the office or even in a public space, I'm trying to be more open. I think the world would be a better place. A smile, an act of kindness, restores our humanity. Next slide. <laughs> Anybody relate to this? Oh, thank you. Actually, this was a sign in my office when I worked in the corporate world. So I want to give you some tips on this. First of all, multitasking is a myth. Studies reveal it doesn't produce the results we desire. Be present in the moment. And how can you do that? Well, here's some tips. Manage your interruptions. Schedule time for calls, callbacks, and texts. In our world today, it's such an instant gratification world. Everybody wants a response and they want it now. Allow yourself some time. Give yourself permission to achieve some sense of accomplishment. So put the phone on mute. I mean, when I had a cubicle, I used to hang a sign that said do not disturb because I needed project time where I could be completely focused. Jennifer or Jessica, you could advance that just one. Um, it's also okay to say no. Others lack of planning does not constitute your, your emergency. So as a manager, if an employee brought me a problem, they knew me well enough, they needed to bring at least one solution. May not be the right solution, but at least some solution. That way they take some ownership in it. And think about what your definition of failure is, because that's what causes our stress. Think about what your definition of failure is. As long as you're in a woulda, coulda, shoulda mode, you're not going to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Instead of saying to yourself, oh, you know, I should have done this or I could have done that, say I will do it or I choose to do it. As long as you're not feeling empowered, you're going to feel stress. And really, when it comes to stress, you can handle whatever comes your way because you're living proof of it right now. When it comes to worry, worry doesn't diminish anything today. It only robs tomorrow of its energy. Also, try using what I call the HALT method. Am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Am I tired? So. The stresses that we put on ourselves, the expectations that we put on ourselves is what causes us to be stressed and out of balance. Next slide. So relationships. When you're working late, need someone to help and comfort you, go back to the element that gives you support. When you need a reality check, go to the other three elements to give you that. When you're going to be with someone who's going to drain your energy, wear your good colors, okay, that's in this presentation. 
And if you know somebody who might need a lift, who might be a little bit low, share that information with them. You could help them out. And here's a tip on sending the message of, I wanna start something, I wanna finish something. When people used to come into my office, I would stand to greet them. And when I felt the meeting was at an end, I would stand to send them off. That's a very subtle way to start and end, okay? Another thing is, and you probably have heard about this, but if not, if you go into a meeting with an agenda, which I highly recommend, anything that's not on topic, put it in what's called the parking lot, which means you'll come back to it at a later time. Stay on topic, stay on agenda, get through it. Also, take the view that there are no bad ideas. I've been in meetings, as a matter of fact, one not too long ago, where I offered a suggestion and this person completely shut it down. Well, that shut me down for the meeting. So there are no bad ideas, just put it in the parking lot, address it later. Another thing I recommend is be very cautious about asking why. It puts people on the defense. Instead, ask how. Well, how did we get to this point? Well, how did the situation arrive? It's much more amenable than, well, why did that happen? I also used to use something I call the three card method. Every person that came into the meeting got three cards. Every person had to spend their three cards. And people were categorized in my mind in three categories. You had the complainers, you had the snipers, and you had the clams. And what the cards did is the complainers really had to think about what they wanted to complain about and keep it down to three things. The snipers who attacked everybody else's ideas, again, they got three opportunities to express their whatever. <laughs> and for the clams, it got them out of their shell, got them brave enough to speak up. Now with the complainers and snipers, of course, I have a meeting with them later and try to correct that behavior, but you get the point. Also, <laughs> I have in my office the sign of a rear end with a big cross over it you know, like the no smoking signs or do not enter signs. And I called it the butt sign. No buts. Eliminate butt out of your vocabulary. So think about it. So I come in and say, oh, that's a really lovely dress, but da 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 da. All the person hears is what comes after but. It completely mitigated the beginning positive message. So instead of saying, but, and even if you have to put a rubber band on your wrist and snap yourself every time you say, but, which is how I help myself break that habit, um, change the word, but to, and that's a really lovely dress. And that would look great at a party, but is as bad as why next slide. Show me the money. Well, studies show that we're motivated. Motiv so I'm listening to me on here and I'm listening to me there. <laughs> Quite confusing. Um, studies show that we're mo more motivated by happiness than money. Money is a tool. It's not a state of being. Money is external. Happiness is internal. We all know we talked about clutter. Clutter is not productive. Treat your space as you want to be treated. Do you want to be treated like a piece of clutter? Or do you want to shine in your environment? Each of us, again, based on our birth dates, we have a personal money spot. Now, this is more than I can get into today, but I wanted you to know it. Not only do you have a money spot, in your office, in your home, in your property. Uh, but each building has a money spot. And 
you know, I've worked with corporations where I've moved the marketing department, the finance department moved around and they got $500 million in short order kind of thing. Um, but it's outside of the scope, but I wanted you to know about it. Um, if you have clutter in your personal money spot, it's going to block, stagnate that energy. Okay. Same thing with a building. You know, if in a building, you know, you've got all your HVAC and storage supplies and all that kind of stuff in your building's money spot, well, you're really doing a disservice to the corporation. However, on my website is an article about prosperity numbers. So if you go out to the blog and search on the word prosperity, an article will come up called prosperity numbers. Those numbers are one, six, eight, and nine. You can use those when you schedule meetings. An effective way to get meetings to start on time is to call them at odd times. What I mean by that is, let's say it's nine, 10 in the morning. Nine plus one equals a one, which is a good energy number, plus nine, 10, you're seeing good energy numbers. Another example is 1140. Well, one plus one plus four is six. 143 was one of my favorites, not a two o'clock meeting. I wanted it at 143. One plus four plus three, good energy number. 333 totals up to a nine. Not only when you set the meeting time, are you setting the intention for prosperity and abundance? It brings more focus because people pay more attention to, oh, it's 3.33, you know, versus, oh, it's three o'clock. Well, you know, they're just more lackadaisical about regular times. If you're working from home, have a dedicated area for your workspace, sharing a room, table, couch, encourages interruptions. Next slide. So, Jessica, let's have you go through here. There's three points I want to appear here. So, we've talked about what direction support you. I can't bring that home enough. I'm sitting in my office now at south at my back, which is my most active direction, and I'm facing north, so I'm in my power position. How do you spend your energy? Well, it goes back to your goals and what do you want to achieve in life? And how do you create work-life balance? So happiness is a journey. No one is in charge of your happiness but you. Joy, satisfaction, work-life balance, freedom emotional and financial. We define what that is and how we manifest it. So what makes you happy? Are you generating that? For those working from home, remember to say thanks to your family and friends. So dedicate some time for them, a family night, a game night, something to say thank you for sharing the space with me. And the more you acknowledge their presence, the more they're going to try not to interrupt you and support you in what you have to do. It's about, right, flow out, flow in. So smile, laugh, love, smiles break barriers. Laughing produces endorphins, great for a reset when you're working and stressed and love. I actually heard this on the Oprah show. <laughs> I have a little sign on my bathroom mirror that says laugh. And I will consciously get up and go someplace that nobody can hear me. <laughs> I have a good belly laugh because it resets the body, resets the mind, and it's just good for us. Again, it gives us endorphins. So today we were to learn about creating a space that maximizes your creativity, promotes your gifts, attracts supportive people, encourages organization and focus, 
and generates abundance. I hope that we've done that for you today. Next slide. <coughs> so now that you know about good directions, go out and get compass. <laughs> Believe me, it'll be one of your best friends. Uh, I work with the, not only physicians, I mean, we will orient rooms for East group people and West group people, and they do have better results. And I work with hotel chains that you go in and say, hey, you know, uh, I'm a number three or a number nine, and they'll pull out their chart and they'll be like, oh, well, these are the rooms that you want. That way you don't have to take a vacation from your vacation. <laughs> and you, you get compasses at Myers, all kinds of places. Next slide. <clears throat> so when it comes to companies, our company is not doing well financially as compared to other companies in the same business. Can Feng Shui help? And the answer is overwhelmingly yes. One of the downloads that uh, is on the Better Business Bureau site for this workshop is a, a case study for a company that I worked with and their resulting letter of recommendation. Their gross margins increased by 500%. One mom and pop single company that I worked with just sold one of their companies for $40 million. And if you're curious and you want to talk more, uh, if you go out to my website, you can sign up for a free 15-minute uh, telephone conversation. So if it's beyond the scope of or wanting to be public with your question, feel free to call. So I'd like to open it up for questions. Next slide. Okay, what a fantastic presentation. Thank you for all those tips and pointers, especially since we're in such unusual times uh, and a state of flux between coming in and out and hybrid workplaces. Uh, we appreciate your insights. So folks that are, are attending, you can access these handouts if you go to your go to webinar control panel you'll see a drop down that says handouts and it says four out of five four handouts are uploaded you are welcome to download those now you will be able to download them um, as long as our webinar is open um, in the meantime if there are questions you can also use that downloaded i'm sorry that drop down menu um, and you can load your question there and Tiffany, thank you so much. Tiffany said to us, thank you, very informative. We appreciate that. You could also use the chat module if that's easier for you as well. I'm monitoring both. Are there any other questions here? Okay, so I do have a question. You mentioned hotel chains that go by numbers. Can you give us the name of one of them that perhaps we should look into? I wish I could. My clients are confidential unless they give me permission to share that information. And Fair enough. As far as hotels, that hasn't been because there's there's still people and companies out there who don't want to seem too woo woo when in fact this is so scientific it's crazy. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So you did tell us the one major change we could do would be to orient our um, work working functionality directions uh what is to our back what is to our front um and i pick up that the other big one would be to be removing clutter in our immediate environment what would be one other easy fix that you would recommend someone do just coming off this webinar today defining your sense of failure oh yes and eliminating the word but, mm -hmm. replacing it with and. And instead of being, and I know you asked for one, um, <laughs> and also just us getting out of the woulda, coulda, shoulda mode and either yeah. say, I will do this or I won't do it. There's power in that. We beat ourselves up. We are our own worst critics. Absolutely. So take a little advice from Yoda, do or do not. Correct. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. Any Jessica, other questions? Jessica, I'm going to ask you to flip to the next screen. Yeah, sure. There we go. So these are the services that I offer. 
and it'll be in the PowerPoint if you choose to download it. And there are links there. They'll take you directly there. I -hmm. have a wealth of articles out there on all kinds of things. So take this and pay it forward. And then if you'll just flip that one more time. This is my social media. I'm not real active on it, but I do put stuff out there, so. Absolutely. Any other questions come up? No, no other questions at the moment, but uh, we're looking forward to seeing where you go with this and how things evolve as people come back to the workforce. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. And anyone who implements anything that we've talked about, I would love to hear what you notice positive or negative. I can take it. Although I anticipate it's going to be positive. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So hopefully everybody has had a chance to uh, download anything that they needed. Um, Anybody that is listening, uh, accredited businesses, we're always taking uh, suggestions for future speakers. We're working on planning out the next year of webinars and in-person seminars. So if you have ideas, suggestions, requests, please send them to me at jhamlin at centralohio.bbb.org. If you know anyone that's looking to become accredited or you want to better um, use and leverage your own accreditation with BBB, reach out to me and I'll help connect you with whomever you need and whatever you need. Thank you so much and we will- And Jessica, just, um, what will you do with this webinar? Will this be available for folks after the fact? Yes, so this will come out as a recording to everyone who signed up to register. Um, It will come as a link, and then later on, when we have a moment to upload, this will also be featured on YouTube. So you can absolutely access that there and share with your friends uh, or colleagues, anyone you think might get a little bit of insight out of the opportunity here. I know for me, you know, and I've mentioned Myers-Briggs, I'm an introvert in Myers-Briggs. So it's a lot of information to be presented with uh, that I do better if I can kind of mull it around. (laughs) And then I have questions. So I'm glad that they have access to it afterwards. I appreciate that very much. Absolutely. And of course, you can link, uh, reach out to Diana herself. Or if you didn't catch it or feel more comfortable, feel free to kick me the questions and I'll forward them and and work as a connector for you all. All right. Thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and stop the recording at this time. Thank you, everyone. Thank Thank you.